Adolescence is a period of tremendous growth when young people are figuring out who they are and what they enjoy, trying new things, learning how to make thoughtful choices, seeing other perspectives, and planning for the future. It's also a risky time to use drugs, which put them at higher risk of a variety of harms, including developing substance-related dependence, also known as addiction, substance use disorder, and other harms. Risk of developing substance use disorder. Our brains continue to develop until we are about 25. During this time, the brain undergoes important developmental processes. It creates many new neurologic connections that gradually get pruned away during adolescence to make way for smoother processing in adulthood. This process of ongoing development and pruning is why we are much more susceptible to becoming addicted to different substances before the age of 25 or so. In fact, nine in 10 people who struggle with addiction started using when they were teens. Other harms. Other harms associated with substance use include short-term and long-term impacts in four areas of life. These include physical health-related harms like effects on the lungs and heart and accidental injury or death. Academic harms such as lower grades and suspension or expulsion from school. They may also disengage from school and have a negative outlook about their educational experiences and future academic careers. Social emotional harms, including strained relationships, lowered self-esteem or self-awareness over their thoughts and emotions, and worsening depression or anxiety, and legal harms, at the individual and systematic level, such as paying fines or being arrested. It's important to note that some young people, particularly those in communities of color, are disproportionately affected by legal harms. Involvement in the criminal justice system can lead to ongoing legal harm. It can cause additional harm to their short and long-term social, emotional, and physical health. These harms are interconnected and young people usually experience more than one at a time. Real versus perceived risks and benefits. Adults often assume that telling a young person about the potential harms of using substances would deter them from using, but often this isn't the case. It's important to consider how they make decisions and find out if there are other perceived risks and benefits that matter to them. For example, they may choose to use a drug to avoid the social risk of feeling isolated. When you talk with a young person about the risks, invite them to describe some of the risks and benefits so that you can understand their thought process and frame your guidance more effectively. This collaborative approach not only helps young people navigate the complexities of their choices, but also empowers them to make informed decisions, ultimately reducing the risks associated with substance use.